Hello everyone, in today's video, I'm going to show you how I set up my charts for order flow trading. I use Optimus Flow, which is the same as Quant Tower. And if you are using one of these two platforms, you can follow along step by step. If not, obviously I won't be able to give you detailed instructions, but you can still get a feel for how I lay out my charts, the tools that I use and why I use them and how I use them. So I'm not saying that this is the best layout or what you should do it's simply what has worked for me um, and allowed me to see the information that i want to see when i trade so this is my overall layout i have a candlestick chart on the left footprint in the middle and then the depth of market on the right i also have cumulative delta on two time frames that's the five minute and the one minute in order to build this from scratch the best and easiest way is to go to chart open up a new chart and choose your data feed and instrument we'll do in queue we can light up there now the first thing that you want to do on this chart is to Click on this icon here. It's the show hide volume analysis toolbar. And this will get you all the features that you need to access for volume profile and footprint chart. So click on that and we'll see this toolbar come up. Now, <clears throat> I like to format my volume profile a certain way. Um, I'm colorblind, so I like bright colors. Um, the default colors are, they don't work for me. Uh, so for volume profile, you're going to click on left profile and let's just do this is one minute um we'll do previous or yesterday uh, there enable and then we'll access a right profile and we'll do today color and then we'll enable that So now it has built a volume profile. This is yesterday's volume profile. This is today's. Um, I don't know if this is entirely accurate because we're going into overnight sessions. So um, this may not be reflective of actual today. But nonetheless, once you have your vol volume profiles up, go to the three lines and click on duplicate panel and then drag and drop that into there. Now we have a one minute one minute let's change this to four hour we can duplicate this again and drag it in and we'll do a 15 minute now all three charts are going to have this the same volume profile what you'll need to do is go in and change it so on a four hour i typically have previous month and current month on a 15 it's the same i have yesterday's volume profile and today's volume profile and i do that as well for the one minute so yesterday's and today's and this is a lot of data so sometimes it takes a while to load um, as you can see by the flashing lights but it will load there you go and it will just give you a general volume profile um, for what happened today and yesterday. So that's the volume profile. On the one minute, I do have cumulative delta. And to add that, you need to right click, indicator, add indicator, and search for cumulative delta. Double click. It will give you some options for style. Um, but that will load at the bottom of your chart. That is tied to the one minute. So if you go to 15, you won't see cumulative delta. If you want to add it, do the same thing. So that's the bar or the candlestick charts, volume profile, and cumulative delta. Now to get a footprint chart, what we're going to do is we're going to duplicate the one minute. Don't put it in the same group. There. And on my footprint charts, I do not have volume profile. And I do not have cumulative delta. 
So in order to access footprint, you'll need to come down here to cluster. And the type, I do double. Data type one is cell volume. Data type two is by volume. And then I color by delta. I am gonna change the settings here because I need more vibrant colors. So delta colors, um, let's just do that and that. Now we'll enable the, enable the cluster view. And now it's going to start building a footprint chart like that. And the other thing that I don't have on this, my footprint chart is the POC for each um, bar. I don't need to see it. You can typically see where the volume's traded. And we're not necessarily looking for POC on the footprint chart. I'm just looking for high volume nodes. So where are big bidders? Where are big sellers? Um, and where the, where the majority of the volume is taking place in these candles over time. So that's the footprint chart. I duplicate it one more time, drag it into this group, and then I might do um, 30 seconds. I, and I wanna have these on one hour because I don't want that much data um, being taken up. So there's your footprint. Now, the last part is the depth of market. So that is gonna be this icon here, Dom. Click on that, drag that to the right. Your depth of market will probably not look like this. I've edited this through the settings, which I'll show you how to do. Um, but I like to have, like I said, high contrast colors, um, bigger font. And the way that you do that is you right click anywhere, go to settings and you can change everything. So you can change um, column or the bids, price ask. Um, you can enable liquidity changes or number of changes, um, last trade size I do have on, um, and then the bid and ask trade size I have off. So it's pretty minimal. Um, let's link that up to you. And again, in fast markets, especially in the NQ, you might have to reduce the font size on here because the market moves so fast. Um, in fact, I don't even know how I would trade the NQ through the DOM um, with this volatility, but you can reduce the font here and then it'll give you more prices on the ladder. Uh, but I trade the S&P Mini, so typically that size of font works for me, um, 16. But on the depth of market, these are limit orders, these are limit offers, and then this is the market order, the last market order that traded. Um, so that's my full setup for order flow trading. Uh, like I said, I enter trades through the depth of market, uh, I manage them on the chart. So if we want to link these now, well, first let's create a bind. So to create a bind, click on these three again, create bind, and then drag this over the groups that you want to bind, press enter, and now we have a new bind. Um, you can save this as a template. So NQ order flow save and the last thing that we can do is link these so i'll link that to blue now anytime that we go way low market Anytime that we put in a limit order, we can see that on our charts, and then we can just drag and drop to modify the order. Um, but that's how you link the charts, and that's how you manage positions, not only through the depth of market, but your footprint chart and your candlestick chart. 
Now when it comes to how I use these tools um, to formulate trade ideas, we'll close that bind. Um, give me a... So what I'm looking for is areas where there are divergences or things that aren't lining up for me. So for instance, about 11 o'clock and before that we put in this low and there was buying in the cumulative delta. So this is the cumulative delta down here. So there was market buying a significant amount. It went from 2,200 to 7,300. So that means that there was 5,000 more contracts bought at the market than sold. Um, and we saw the response, price came up. It hit VWAP, and that's another thing that I have up on my one minute is just a standard VWAP. I think it's a four hour one. Um, and then price came down, consolidated, came down, and it was starting to look weak. But what was happening during the close is that price was coming down but the delta wasn't making significantly new lows. It made a new low here, new low here. But at this point, price was still coming down and that's when we saw a shift in the cumulative delta. And there was buying here, price came down quite a bit, quite a bit there. Um, but the market delta um, or the cumulative delta wasn't really directional. It came off a little bit, a little bit. there was some buying, selling, um, but again, Price was making lower lows while the delta was making, the cumulative delta was making higher lows. And that tells me that there is potential tension built up in the market. Um, if we look at where price stopped, it was at this volume node from yesterday. Um, and I will look at volume profile for like low volume nodes, high volume nodes. Um, again, we can see here there was a lot of volume kind of drops off and then less volume consolidation. Um, so I do use that for targets, but really what I was looking at today was this huge difference in market orders compared to price. So when price was coming down, from this, and now this is a five second chart. When price was coming down, market delta was drifting, but still it wasn't like it was before. Um, it just, it, it's almost wasn't very directional and it felt like there was a lot of tension being built up. So we saw a spike in price, consolidated, got long, exited here. My initial target was the 49.75 and then wait for it to play out a little bit, take a few more trades. Um, when it comes to the footprint, so it's gonna be a little bit more difficult to see with the volatility, the way that it's been, um, but there is a way to scrunch this down and then you can see it'll like group however many ticks together. Um, when price came down here, there was a lot of volume being traded. Um, if you zoom in, there's a high volume node here. There was some volume here. So what this was telling me is that bidders are stepping in and there's more volume being traded here. And that doesn't tell me where exactly the market's gonna go, but it tells me that something is going to happen. So when you're speaking in terms of risk reward and you're saying, okay, if there's a lot of tension built up, I know that the market is gonna move out of this zone and the higher probability trade is a long trade because we just took out a downside target and at the very end buyers stepped in more that tension was released and drifted upwards but not as directional as this move was um, so i'm kind of using every tool in conjunction with each other the cumulative delta volume profile and then I'm really focusing on the footprint chart for entries. Um, I hope that helps. If I've missed anything, please let me know. Um, and until next time, thank you.